The Wood Whisperer is sponsored by Powermatic and Typebond. You know, in the ideal world, I would spend every day in the shop, but the reality is I spend about half of my time in the office editing video, answering emails, stuff like that. And unfortunately, I tend to be kind of messy, and my old desk didn't really give me much room to store the things that I use all the time, like external drives, all of my SD cards or equipment. So this year, I finally had a chance to build myself a big old desk so I could sit my big old butt in this chair and work. Uh, but it's got a lot of technological features and details that I think you're really gonna like. Let's check it out. We'll get this party started with the legs. The legs will get their final shape later, but for now, we need to get them cut to size. Next, we can work on the rails. The lower front rail has a long continuous curve that gets interrupted by the legs, so I'll take care to cut those from a single board, accounting for the width of each leg. Thoughtful grain selection is something that will help set your work apart from the rest. The remaining rails are then cut to size and the bottom rails all receive a curve. For the panels, we'll use 3 quarter inch cherry plywood. I want my panels to contrast with the rest of the desk, but I don't want to use something as drastic as maple, so I'm trying something new to me, wood bleach. The bleach should help prevent some of the natural color change that occurs in cherry, leaving the panels slightly lighter in color. We'll see how it pans out over time, but I think it's going to look super sweet. The panels of the desk are essentially faux frame and panel, so the rails are just face glued in place. To accommodate a wire gutter, we need cutouts in the two inside panels. The right pedestal receives a back and bottom. The back creates an open space for cables and power and the bottom panel is spaced about an inch from the back panel to allow for additional airflow. The bottom panel is then attached to the bottom rail. Now we can cut a few holes for power, wire grommets, and a ventilation fan. Using a jig, I can drill holes for adjustable shelves. To join the legs to the panel, I'll use dominoes. You know, I've made a lot of mortise and tenon joints in my life, and sometimes it's just nice to do woodworking on easy mode. And here's the right pedestal dry assembled, no glue yet. We can also cut mortises and assemble the left pedestal, which features three drawers. So now let's fancy up our legs. With a series of cuts at the table saw, the bulk is removed and the rest of the work is done by hand at the bench. Because this thing would be ridiculous to move as one piece, I'll use knockdown hardware to connect the center panel. I've been wanting to try the Festool connectors, so this seemed like a great project for it. These are incredibly pricey, but if you already have a domino and you need knockdown hardware, it's a really sturdy option. A much cheaper alternative is the standard cam lock hardware that we've all seen in store-bought furniture. So let's make some drawers. Dovetails and box joints are great, but sometimes it's nice to utilize a simple reinforced rabbit. The drawer bottom groove is cut into all of the parts and the frame is then glued up. The bottom drawer is actually a file drawer. So before gluing it together, I'll cut a few notches for file hanger rails. Now we can drive the screws for extra reinforcement. The drawer bottom stock is then cut to size and installed in each drawer. The drawer sides I'm using are soft close undermount style. The instructions are pretty complicated, but once you wade through it all, the installation is actually pretty easy. On the drawer, we'll use a little jig to help pre-drill for the locking mechanisms. And now for a quick test. Huzzah! 
The drawer fronts can now be cut to size and attached to the drawer boxes. The oversized hole I drilled allows for slight adjustment of the drawer front after installation. Just for funsies, I decided to integrate some sculpted pools. The bulk is hollowed out with a core box bit for the finger area, and then the front is roughly shaped at the bandsaw. The final shape is refined at the workbench. The idea here is to create an illusion that the pool was carved out of the drawer front itself, so I'll remove a strip of material from the top of the drawer front. And now the pool can be glued into place. What's a big giant desk without a hidden drawer? Nothing. So we'll make one. I'll install a wide drawer under the left pedestal. The key to the illusion is using the bottom inside rail as a false front. When it's closed, it's completely concealed. Now let's work on a door. The parts are cut to size, and then I can do a traditional loose mortise and tenon joint. I could use the domino again, but in the guild, I like to show multiple ways to get things done. The simple shop-made jig makes it easy to cut the mortises. The great thing about loose mortise and tenons is that it's pretty easy to make perfect fitting tenons. Before gluing up the frame, we can cut the rabbit for the glass. Now I'll install a grid work of muntins, which is perhaps my favorite word in woodworking. I'll measure and cut the muntins so that they cross over with half laps. Then I can drop the muntins in the frame and mark the shoulders for rabbits on the ends. Next, I scribe the muntins into the frame's rabbit so that we can make some little notches to accept the muntins. The muntin grid is then glued into place. Muntin, muntin, muntin. To install the knife hinges, I'll actually use some CA glue to hold the hinge in place while I scribe around the perimeter. Next, I'll route the bulk and clean up the mortise with a chisel. Finally, we can glue the right pedestal together. Now that everything is assembled, we can test the fit of the door. The door needs a handle, so I think a modified version of the drawer pull should look nice. To prevent the door from swinging in too far, we can install a stop. A magnet helps keep the door closed. The desk panels will receive decorative styles with slight tapers. These are just glued and pinned in place. The front of the desk gets two unique styles that make good use of sapwood. The wire gutter is pretty simple to make and connects between the two pedestals. Now for the top. I'm actually going to intentionally put sapwood into two of my joints. There are two types of people in this world, those who enjoy the look of sapwood and those who are wrong in the head. The top is then shaped with an alcove on the user side and a gentle curve on the front. To allow wires to pass through the desktop, I'll route a little access hole. The lid is cut to fit and features a little gap for the wires with a shape that mimics the top. I also bleach this piece so that it matches up with the sapwood. Whenever designing furniture, try to find tasteful ways to echo shapes and color elements throughout the project to make the piece more cohesive. Now I'll locate and route the recess for my wireless charger. 
Installing it like this allows it to be completely hidden while also allowing easy replacement when the time comes. The top will be attached to the base using shop-made clips. The Domino does a great job of making these mortises, but a biscuit joiner or router would work as well. At the back of the top drawer, I'll cut a hole for a power outlet. This one features USB as well as standard receptacles. The door requires a glass pane, so I'll cut it to size and use my fancy glass cutting mittens to break it. To hold the glass in place, I'll construct a little rabbited frame that'll be screwed to the back of the door. For the finish, I'll make my own oil wax blend. My mix is three cups of polymerized linseed oil, one tablespoon of beeswax, two tablespoons of carnauba wax, and a bucket load of spag love. You can add more or less wax depending on the results you're after, but the more wax you add, the harder it's gonna be to apply the material to the surface. The mixture is slowly heated and then added to a squeeze bottle for easy application. I'll apply the finish using a buffing pad on my random orbit sander. This allows me to spread the finish quickly while also driving a thin layer of oil and wax into the grain. I can then wipe off the excess. I'll use the buffing pad anywhere I can and then go manual for the tight spots. Just so you know, this is by no means an incredibly durable finish. It's an all natural old school finish that will likely require maintenance in the future. But on the plus side, there are no harmful fumes, it's incredibly easy to apply, and spot repairs can be done in the future. Though as the cherry darkens, a spot repair can become an eyesore, but this is no time for logic. Let's just enjoy the cherry coming to life. I applied a total of three coats with at least 24 hours between each one. Oil takes a long time to cure. Now I can install my electronics, and cut my file hanger bars, and then move this beast into the office. Now, if you want more details on this build, you should definitely check out the Wood Whisperer Guild. I've got over 20 videos on this project alone showing you every detail from top to bottom, as well as a full set of plans and a SketchUp model. And of course, I'm there to help you along the way if you have trouble, All right? And this year, we've actually added a bunch of new instructors to the guild, and I think you're gonna be interested in the things that they're building and the stuff that they can bring to the table as well. All right, so be sure to check that out. In the meantime, I've got very important things to do today.